John Lee, thank you very much for uh, joining me for this civil conversation. In Jackson, Mississippi. We're inside the uh, museum that houses both the Museum of Mississippi History and the Civil Rights Museum. We're in the civil rights part. Republicans look at national Democrats, the national left, and say, well, they control most of the media, entertainment, tech companies, universities. And if we let that go, uh, and they have political power too, then they're going to change our way of life in a way of life that makes sense in West Hollywood and makes sense in Brooklyn, New York, just isn't where Mississippi is. And Democrats look at Republicans and fear that if you're a marginalized person, uh, however you define that, it could be race, it could be income, it could be transgender. Well, Republicans don't really care about you. I keep hearing over and over again from conservatives, well, the left controls everything except for some politics. and I you know, some, some political institutions. And I keep hearing from you know, Democrats, well, you know, the right, when they get control of the levers of government, they're not gonna give anything, whether it's money or, you know, quarter to a transgender kid who's confused in high school. Whether that means, you know, he can play on sports teams or she can play on sports teams or bathrooms or whatever is a, maybe a further issue, but just, hey, basic human dignity. That's what I hear, and I wonder if you guys would comment on that. I'm, I'm for basic human dignity, for sure. Uh, I don't think it's but do you feel normal for someone to be totally defined by their sexuality or by their sexual preference or by their sexual identity. Why do they have to push their sex up in my face okay, and make me make a judgment on it? And if I don't accept that, then I'm some sort of bigot. Uh, when I didn't ask to see that, I didn't ask to be part of that, I think that every single American ought to have the same rights as everybody else. But you shouldn't have special rights because you've decided that you're in the wrong body. You shouldn't have special rights because you like another man or you like another woman. That, that's beside the point. You're a human being and you have basic human rights. You don't get special treatment because of the way you choose to live your sexual life. What would an example of a special treatment be? Here? So, to say that um, to say that they would have a law, you know, for them that you have to bake a cake for them. If you don't bake a cake for me for my wedding, then I'm going to sue you because you didn't. Uh, and that I feel like that that baker has First Amendment rights, freedom freedom of expression, freedom of speech rights, not to not to do something that. Uh, betrays their religion or their beliefs that they they hold so deeply um, and so and it seems like there's there's continually lawsuits that push that agenda uh, look at what's happening at target uh, with the restrooms can a man go into the woman's restroom can a man with a wig go into the woman's restroom and uh you know the fact that they're saying that uh toddlers can decide that they're transgender and they can start hormone therapy. I mean, it just it's outrageous to me that they target the smallest of children uh, to try to get sex reassignment surgeries and, and, and for what? To further their idea, to further their cause, uh, to make victims of these kids before they have a brain uh, to make their own decision. Um, you know, we, we dealt with that in Mississippi and we said that n no public uh, hospitals here could do that for anyone under the age of 18, you know, and there was there was a controversy about it. Uh, so I will uh, um, describe this issue as similar to the whole issue of voter fraud, and vo voter uh, um, uh, voter wrongdoing. Uh, it, it, a lot of the legislation that we came up with in, in successive years dealing with voter 
education, voter, well, voter registration and voter ID and all that was to, to deal with this perceived corruption in our voting system. There was no corruption. Time and time again, when, when proponents of legislation would be asked the question, give me an example of voter fraud. Just ask David Archie. Well, <laughs> David Archie's got a whole bunch of these fouls. Go figure. Uh, but, I don't know but, who David Archie is, but uh, Hines got a supervisor who, who <laughs> lost two to one and swore that there was voter fraud. Oh, okay. uh, but, but you know, but, but for all the legislation, we've had bill after bill after bill. Dealing there could have been Russian collusion. Well, then let's deal with the Russian collusion. Yeah, the, the let's not deal the, with, with trying to, to punish somebody for for for, for wanting to, to help someone fill out a a, a a a voter ballot when that person has been identified by the person who's filling out the ballot that this is who I want helping me fill out my ballot. It's, that shouldn't be criminalized, and yet oftentimes we we try to criminalize stuff like that. So, you know, the, the transgender prohibitions and bathrooms, and, you know, those to me, and it's just like critical race theory. It came out of Virginia and the guy who won governor, who was a, a Republican, won. And that became a, a, for, a magic, magic formula for folks winning in, in, in uh, tight races. I'll throw out critical race and you'll win. So a lot of these pieces of legislation that, that are dealing with uh, athletic participation by transgender. I, you know, there, there, there are solutions in, 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 in search of a problem. Uh, you know, there might be a one issue somewhere in the country and it, it all of a sudden uh, elicits a whole plethora of pieces of legislation. Well, it's the Barney Five philosophy. We want to nip it in the bud yeah, before it comes here. And, and, yeah. and, and, and Barney more often was wrong about nipping something in the bud than he was right. He had his one bullet to do it. He has one bullet. He's going to take that shot whenever he, he got it. He didn't shoot himself. <laughs> but, um, you know, that, that issue, the transgender and, and the whole uh, gender issue, uh, I think more than any other issue has the potential of tearing this country apart uh, because more than race. I'm, well, well, you know, I, I, now this is going to really get me in trouble. I, I think that the folks who are in, involved with with gender identification issues have have joined themselves at the hip with the whole notion of civil rights. E equal to the condition that black folks are undergoing. And I, I personally don't see it. I don't equate what folks who have, might have been persecuted or who are going through issued identification dilemmas in their life. I, I don't equate that with someone who's, who's had a racial issue. But, 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 but this whole notion of sex and of you know, a, a assignment of, of you know, your gender really upsets a lot of people at the court because they fear it. They fear it and they don't understand it. They don't know how, how it's going to impact their lives. And, and, and so there is a knee-jerk reaction, a, a, a nip it in the bud reaction um, that, that I think goes too far. But it's an issue that I, it's, I, it's still swirling around in my head how I really feel about you know, this issue one way or the other. And I feel like, you know, sometimes you're know, you putting me in a, a bag where I, I, I'm, I'm going to get associated with this thing where I might not feel the same way, uh, but I'm a Democrat. So if you're a Democrat, you got to feel this way. You're a Republican, you got to feel that way. And as long as, as we put ourselves in those kinds of trick bags, we're going to continue to have problems in this country. But, but, but that, that the whole issue of, of gender and, and um, what we do with our bodies, whether it's prohibiting or allowing for abortion, what we do with our, whether we, we say I, 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 I'm, I'm a man trapped in a woman's body, uh, that, that is in need of a lot more conversation than we have time for. I'm going to use that clip if you ever run against me. <laughs> 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 I'm with you, Lee. <laughs> That's funny. Um, well, the uh, yeah, the the trans issue has really become a uh, 
incredibly divisive one. Um, and uh, it, what is the status of, I mean, you, you mentioned um, everybody, has, in your opinion, needs to you know, have human dignity, the state needs to provide for that, human rights, and so on and so forth, right? So what do you do with a, a kid who's 10th grade or whatever, who's having an identity crisis, who, um, you know, is getting bullied, whatever? How, how does the, how should the state of Mississippi well, I mean, deal with First of all, bullying is never acceptable. And we should, we should have a no-tolerance policy for bullying, and that's something that would have to be uh, administered by the by the school administration, but and is that uh, something Democrats and Republicans could find common? I think that they would have they would agree with that. No uh, bullying. Is there a no bullying law in the state? We have anti-bullying laws on the books, um, you know, but I just don't know if I, I I think that my colleagues who are Republicans have a propensity uh, to kill a gnat with a sledgehammer. And and uh, on some issues that are these these wedge issues, knee jerk issues. It's effective. It's effective, and and you know what, it it it, it does a, uh, a good job of scurrying and rallying the base, and that's what if, you, if you're trying to get turnout, you got to get, get the base agenda. Mm -hmm. I understand all that. I just don't agree with it. Um, but but you know the. Um, the, the 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 thing that that gets me the most about where we are is the fact that we, we, we you know you know for 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 uh, 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 for Republicans claim that we believe in less government we pass more bills that put the screws on this entity or this little group or that effort or that effort. It's like, hey, I thought you guys were for less government. No, we got to pass this, this piece of legislation. We got we to regulate this. And, and there's a lot of regulation that, again, is, is a, a, a solution in search of a problem. If we say the business model of the media is to get clicks if you're social media or get viewership, and conflict is something that makes people watch. It's like our monkey brains, right? Um, if you see two people fighting over there, everyone turns and looks. Um, I'm a filmmaker in my business. If you don't have conflict in your movie, no one's gonna come see it. So I understand that business model for the media. There is a business model, if you will, for politics, which is following the rules of the game, just like in the business model for media is I need to get the people to watch. In politics, you need to get people to vote for you, and you need to get people to vote for you within the district that has been set for you. You guys are professional politicians, so it will come as no surprise to you that I'm going to ask about um, gerrymandering, which most of the public doesn't even realize exists. But the idea that, and I, I say here in Mississippi, it's, it's a, about as extreme as it gets. The idea that most districts are very heavily Democrat or very, very heavily Republican. Um, makes it really hard to say, okay, well, you know, I got to worry about my general election campaign because you are probably more likely to get primaried by somebody who's saying you're not conservative enough and you are probably more likely to get primaried by somebody who's saying you're not liberal enough. So you guys can sit here in this museum and have a civil conversation and go get beers and talk about things. But at the end of the day, if you want to stay in office, you got to win your primary first. It doesn't have to be that way. There are a few states that are experimenting with other systems, be it uh, districts that are not uh, drawn to be gerrymandered because there uh, is a public committee that's doing it, or ranked choice voting, you know, where you say there's three people who are voting, and this guy I want to give zero points to, this guy I want to give two points to, and this person in the middle I want to give one point to. I realize it's a practical impossibility anytime soon in this state, um, but what do you guys think in terms of 20, 30, 50 years from now, how could our politics be reformed by changing the rules of the game? And all federal elections are state elections, and all state elections are state elections. So the laws would have to change at the state level. It's like term limits. You know, everyone's for term limits until the people who would be affected by the term limits uh, have to push the button and pass the bill. As far as redistricting goes, um, you know, or we, different we, we, see, we see problems in Alabama right now uh, happening with the, their congressional redistricting that they did and, and uh, 
and maybe it was their legislative redistricting. I'm not sure, but but they're getting some some blowback from the from the federal government about how they did it and the fact that they didn't do what they were supposed to have done in the first place. Mississippi, uh, for many many years, was under the watchful eye of the federal government to make sure that we didn't gerrymander or uh, do anything that would suppress uh, minority voting, and um, you know, and so. Uh, now, you know, we do have districts that are comfortably Republican or comfortably Democrat and, and not very many that are 50-50. Uh, but, you know, I've never served on an election committee uh, in the House or Senate. And, John, you may have some experience there that I don't have. But, um, you know, we have a, a certain set of rules that we have to live by. And some of those are self-imposed. Some of those are... Uh, federal guidelines and uh, I think that uh, the people who are drawing the lines are operating uh, within the scope of, of the the pattern that they've been given by the authorities uh, to do what you're suggesting would uh, would certainly shake things up and be very interesting uh, but again it would be people who have their own self-interest uh, at heart who would have to do the changing who might not come back as a result of it. A hundred percent. I I, so, I, uh, I don't want, I, I definitely want to let you You in. maybe could do it as a ballot initiative and, and have the people make that decision uh, outside the legislature. Is, is there a ballot initiative process in this? No, not, not currently. Uh, a Supreme Court struck it down in the course of consideration of a ballot initiative on medical marijuana that a, a mayor of one of our cities challenged because she said that the votes were improperly gathered uh, because we, we uh, it, it was uh, gathered uh, in consideration of five congressional districts. After the 2000 ballot, census. Yeah, after, after, and, and we lost a, a congressional district. And so we're down to four. So we gathered the, the, the votes uh, in what was the, the previous five districts and the court said the, the language said no more than 20 percent of the votes could right. come from any any, any one, one district, district. Yeah. and so, the source it made it unworkable so they struck it down and we've had two years to bring it back and the legislature has chosen not to bring it back thus far N not no uh, uh, uh citizen initiatives no no uh initi initiative and referendums generated by citizens yes well uh, uh, let me blue sky it then for whatever reason, it becomes a big national issue. Fifty percent of the electorate of Mississippi is like, we need to change. We need to change the way elections are run. Whatever, you guys are retiring, or it's going to take place ten years from now, right? The change is going to take place. What would make a difference? What would allow for more compromise? For more, I don't even want to call compromise is a dirty word. What is the result that you're looking for? Well, uh, ability to work together. To, 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 well, to, to create more districts that are balanced given the population and demographics of the state. In Mississippi, for example, we have three, uh, three million people, right, right at three million people. We have four congressional districts, and, and um, uh, we have 40 percent roughly black population, but we got a 25 percent stake in, in Congress. Uh, and you know, my experience is, is that when, when you're doing things like redistricting, whoever the guys are that are in charge are going to protect their own interests. That's that's just the bottom line. They're not they're not there to be fair. Um, and so the result of that in in the last half of my tenure, as Republicans have taken charge, we you know there's there was this overarching interest in making sure that there was significant. Or at least adequate black representation in the House and the Senate, and and I, I see that there's been a, a bit of a pivot now. Uh, we, we've got 15 black districts in the in the Senate, uh, really uh, early 16, one which uh, a, a white Democrat holds holds one of those seats, and and um, we're probably going to have those uh, those seats for. for the, the, ne the next while. Uh, what, what we've seen is redistricting to, to redistrict white Democrats out of office and, and to strengthen majority white districts that tend to be Republican districts. And so I don't see that we're going to see any kind of major change in that in my lifetime. 
because of the nature of the redistricting process and the gerrymandering that goes along, it would be great if we had a, an independent third party that would decide districts. And they would do it based on unfairness, demographics, uh, gender, whatever. And, and you make sure that you, you, you get a representative government. But it will be judged by whichever side came out better as being good and whichever yeah. side came out worse as being but, bad. But if you had a third party to do it, then you, that might more. Wouldn't make you like it if you uh, lost. A balanced uh, why not, why not, uh, uh, program uh, in place. Come into place 10 years down the road. I mean, that, that's one way to do it. But like, I, like we said earlier, we, we agree on issues 90% of the time. If my wife and I agree 90% of the time, we're doing great. So, uh, well, you know, and I agree about 50 percent. Yeah, maybe. there you go. Maybe less. So maybe you need a third party to come <laughs> and show you how to do it better. But we need uh, a marriage counselor uh, in, in uh, politics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, there's no question it's a very difficult road to hoe. I just w wondered if if you could get past the self-interest of people who want to get reelected. Uh, you're what not going to get past like? self-interest. That, well, that, that's I mean, a problem. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's uh, you, you, you got to you got to be a yeah a, a, re, a real forward thinker um, uh, to um, put something like that in place down the road. And, or it's got to bubble up from the public in yeah, such a powerful yeah. well, way. I mean, yeah. well, and I don't, I don't see where the public. Is looking at it like that in Mississippi. From from 1817 to 2012, we were under Democratic control, and so Republicans have been in charge for 12 years now. And um, you know, people are demanding change because it's not fair. You know, and um, so I think I think we're doing great. Yeah, and, but and we can do better for sure. We can always do better. And I I say to that that. The party names have changed in terms of who's in charge. The mentality has not. And that's the rub, that because it then does go back to race. It, it goes back to who's in charge, who has the power, who has the control, and who wants to keep it, and who's trying to get it. And, and historically, that, 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 that struggle has been a black-white struggle. You, you, it might have been white folks who called themselves Democrats during the Civil War and Reconstruction, but they're the same folks who call themselves Republicans now. So it's not so much about the name, it's about the perspective and the, 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 the leadership positions that folks take. I think it's very, very dangerous to, to, to lump everyone into one category and say, because you are one of these people, then you must be like this and you must think like that and that must be your motivation. Uh, because not everyone is like that. And that's absolutely true. Um, not not uh, all Democrats are my friends and not all Republicans are my enemy. But likewise, uh, not all Republicans are my friends and not all Democrats are my enemies. So, so you know... I just want us all to pull the card in the same direction. Exactly. But, but it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of conversation. What are three issues that are hard issues, not simple ones like we're going to fund the state police an extra 50 officers or something, right? Something about race, something about um, uh, gay or transgender issues, um, something about policing, you know, uh, the, the, some controversial issues that you think there's, there could be common ground in the next couple of years. You know, it, a, a state like Mississippi where there's such a, a, an intense love of hunting and the outdoors and Second Amendment rights. Um, and, and that's Democrats and Republicans have those feelings. Blacks and whites, you know, love their guns. Um, but at the same time, we've got a crime problem and we have a gun problem in America. And if Democrats and Republicans in Mississippi could sit down and craft some sort of a compromise or a path f forward that provides a middle ground. That could work where, nationally. Where, where it could work nationally. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, Mississippi has led the way in so much of this country's politics and, and the shaping of, of the country's character. Uh, we uh, determined the outcome of the Civil War in this state, at the Siege of Vicksburg. We, uh, the, the, the way of the Civil Rights Movement took a dramatic turn 
when the, the three civil rights workers were assassinated and the, the nationwide, the, the, the search for, for them on nationwide television uh, kind of opened people's eyes. And, and so, you know, the, the Mississippi plan that was the way the Republican Party evolved into the, the party that it is today. Mississippi kind of wrote that plan. But if Mississippi were to come together, Democrats and Republicans, to say we're going to try to solve this gun control thing because too many of our babies, our mamas, our young men, our young women are dying behind it and we've got to get a, get, get a handle on this issue. Preserve folks' uh, uh, gun rights, but at the same time do some sensible things about who could have a gun and how it can be used. Do you, do you think that's something? You well, I mean, I, would, I, I think that guns don't kill people. People kill people. And guns are a tool, and, and we have a, we have a mental health problem in our state and our country. We have a crime problem. We have poverty problems. We have gang problems. Uh, all of these things are uh, rife with uh, violence, and and sometimes guns are used. And uh, it may be that we can look at who who can get a gun. You have to be sane to have a gun, or uh, you can't be mentally ill. Uh, but we need to. We probably need to spend more dollars in the mental health area uh, to try and and get some folks diagnosed and and treated, uh, so that they don't uh, take matters into their own hands with a gun. Uh, we need to work on um, helping families succeed, helping children have hope that they can grow up and and get an education and, and be somebody. We have. We have invested many, many millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars in our education program. And we need to continue to see public education thrive in Mississippi so that every child can read like they're supposed to read after the third grade, after the fourth grade, after the 12th grade. Uh, that they have a path beyond high school to learn a trade or to go to college or to go to uh, community college. I mean, just a way to have a, earn a skill to make a living to support themselves. And we need there to be hope. You know, I think it would be remiss to say that uh, if we didn't mention the fact that we have a brand new flag in Mississippi. After all these years, we've worked together and we have a new state flag, the In God We Trust flag. And uh, it's something that we work together on and we put aside uh, any type differences we might have to agree that Mississippi's days are best looking forward and not looking back. We don't want to forget the past, but we want to focus on the future and our children's future. And we don't want to take away from, from anyone's history. Uh, we want to grow from it, to learn from it, to be better and look forward. And I think that's exactly what we're trying to do. But the key is we need to work together. We need to decide what common issues are and approach those yeah. together, and hand in hand. I would say I'd go a, a step further and say that not just education but workforce development uh, would be a second issue Then I would say there's an opportunity for Democrats and Republicans to work together. Um, and it, it's, it's, um, it's not just you know, knowing how to read, but having a career path that works for you to give you gainful employment where you can take care of yourself and be financially independent and not have to depend on the state for, for anything. The state has the resources to craft such a, a strategy. Uh, but again, our past gets in the way of our future because we, we, we're clinging to old, old attitudes and, and and are not not willing to put something together that really really works. Um, we we we, ha we have a twofold problem as it relates to education in Mississippi. One is a need for remediation, because despite um, uh, the progress that has been made in, in our reading skills, we still are behind the rest of the country in our educational attainment in K twelve. Uh, we're making progress, but but we need to be doing. Well, we're number thirty-one. Yeah, we, we need to be make, making quantum leaps. And someone might say that the third grade gate was a quantum leap, but but. And we're twenty-one there. Yeah, but in terms of of the practicality 
of the translation of, of those improvements into jobs, into careers, into taking care of my family, all that. We're not there yet. And, and, and there needs to be a, a quantum leap that, that yeah, we've got to do remediation, but once we, remedi we, we, we remediate, we've got to make a quantum leap in terms of how we're dealing with the futuristic nature of education and training and how, how who, we're, we're not, we're, Jackson is not competing against Tutwiler, or it's not competing against Madison or Pearl. We're competing against Okinawa or, or uh, somewhere in, in, in the Greek islands. It's a worldwide competition, and yet we're not there yet, except in some pockets around Mississippi. We're not there yet in terms of having the kind of ecosystem in our workforce development and education system that really is going to help us make that quantum leap. Well, uh, if we can sit here in the Mississippi History and Civil Rights Museum, black Democrat, white Republican, and have a conversation with uh, this level of civility, and um, then that gives me hope that uh, you guys can work together in the future, uh, maybe more so than have been in the past. And uh, I just want to thank you again for, for, uh, for coming here and hope you guys end up having a beer tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> Look, I, I'm available if, if Lee is. <laughs> I don't know uh, what, what the schedule is, but I've got, I've got uh, to get to Atlanta first thing in the morning, but I can, I can stand a beer right now. <laughs> Let's pull each other up. There you go. Oh. Thank you guys so appreciate much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it.